Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insiders uh, 16. We deliver the news about the creation of our project Edwards. And first of all, to go, Oksana, could you please start our talk today? Ah, okay, thank you, Oksana. Hello. Kugawa on the uh, weekly Edelverse Insider. Uh, should I say, well, the population problem in the city of, uh, you see, uh, it is uh, often mentioned that uh, Edo at, in its times uh, was the biggest city in the world, uh, a population of 1 million uh, by 1700. Uh, and then uh, when Ieyasu, Tokugawa Ieyasu moved into Edo in uh, 1590, I think it would be like a 50,000 most the population growth rate would be like okay now uh yes of course knew that it will become a big city and that was one of his strategies uh, managing japan is that the city bigger than kyoto or osaka and to shift the uh the uh, gravitational center of the population uh eastwards uh and then but things happened uh, much quicker than had been originally thought. Uh, for one thing, the population of Japan grew uh, more than, uh, well, more than double within the century. So from one, 113 million to uh, 30 million within 100 years. Uh, and the population of Edo grew, let's say, at the beginning of Tokugawa rule, it was 100,000. And they built things accordingly. So Edo Castle was huge. And then each daimyo got plenty of land, uh, all the temple that were there or those that moved in uh, to these backwaters, they got plenty of land. Uh, so by the time uh, there are a million living in Edo, and then half of them civilians, uh, population. So uh, those apart from the commercial classes and craftsmen and so on and so forth. Uh, now, uh, let's say uh, in 1700 or even in 1800, uh, only 20% of the land to the civilians. So, uh, and then uh, at most uh, high, the buildings of Edo were like two stories high. Uh, on average, six would have like locus. So that's about what? 20 square meters for uh, six people. Uh, they had many children in the poorer parts of Hong Kong today, when it, where a family of uh, four would live uh, in like um, 10 square meters. Yes. So, uh, and then, so was Edo City uh, in its heyday a huge slum? Uh, no, it was not actually. Uh, because, and this is uh, what was great about the Tokugawa regime was that uh, they, they, lent, they leased the land to all the samurai that served the shogun directly, the Hatamoto and the Gokeni. Then, they would, those samurai would then uh, lease or sublet their, um, their, land, their, their, dwell, their land for dwelling to the uh, civilians. So that is how they could survive on very low stipends. And that was a secret. So uh, if you analyze the actual map, map Tokugawa time, so uh, uh, 1850 and uh, afterwards, then uh, the real ratio uh, of land to the population was that the uh, civilian land was more than 50%. So then it was pretty well balanced. Uh, but, and then uh, those civilian lands, uh, they were the, the uh, rich merchants uh, would, take a would take large space for uh, their shops. And then uh, some would rent from high-ranking hatamoto, uh, those directly serving the shoguns, and uh, they would start a casino as that would be off limits, just like the temples. Okay, and uh, for commoners who move in, uh, they would live in very cheap housing with thin walls, so all the conversation are heard uh, by your neighbors and especially the landlord, uh, which again, just like the barbers I was talking about last time, uh, were reporting to the authorities whatever interesting information that would come out, uh, okay? And, uh, and so now, uh, after thinking about uh, the barbers and this time about the landlords, uh, I'm getting the image of Edo that it may seem very happy, but actually it was like a, the ideal or the model police state. So one, one, one uh, analysis puts the uh, ratio of informants to the population at like 40%. It was like East Berlin, 
but everyone seemed to be very happy. So uh, that is why Tokugawa Ieyasu chose Edo, which was an absolute waters at the time uh, in the at the end of the uh, 16th century. So because you set up things to make it make it into a real police state, but if people move in afterwards, then no one's going to complain. And then look at Hong Kong today. The Hong Kong people uh, had a very free life. And then the communists come in. So they're complaining all over with umbrellas. But uh, if people think that that is the way things are in this city we're moving into, then uh, they would just uh, take it as, as it is and uh, never make any noise about that. So that is the secret of the uh, piece of Tokugawa in, within the city of Edo, was that it was a very densely monitored police state city. <laughs> and that's it for today. Thank you very much, Oksana, and everyone. Bye. Uh, thank you very much, Tokugawa-san. Uh, yes, it makes sense. Like, uh, they didn't know any better, I think, in that times. Uh, so, also, uh, next, again, could you please uh, join us? Yeah. Thank you, Oksana. Hello, Oksana? everyone. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm surprised to hear every time, you know, Edo's story from Mr. Tokugawa san is so incredible anyway. Uh, today, I'd like to update something about our ambassador because uh, last week um, I had some chat with my partner and then I introduced some partner to Dominic and then we discussed uh, some famous guy. I, I cannot say specific name yet, but some famous guy uh, is willing to join our project as an ambassador. And then uh, I'm gonna su supposed to have some meeting with them around maybe June 15th or June 18th or something like that. And this is one good news for you. And then the other guy who is also engaged in the project uh, in the space, uh, which is created by our uh, studio, is also interested in joining us and he's so, so famous. So maybe if he could join our project, it's gonna be super huge hmm. impact for our space and then globally famous anyway. So maybe we found two potential ambassadors for our project. Hmm. And then this is, this is up, one update from my side. And then the other update is we are considering uh, tokenize. Uh, I mean, uh, we already mentioned Koban and Zeni and function, functional difference already we explained. And then we now try to define more detail, uh, for example, how much is a market cap should be on Koban and then Zeni and how we can start this campaign for all of the investors, all of the supporters. And of course, we are supposed to make announcement that um, our tokenize is going to be uh, partially decided and then we'll make announcement on uh, June 7th. So we have to prepare for calculating all of the things and then our uh, use case and function wise. And uh, supposed to be we are able to start some campaign in terms of Zeni first. And then Koba is more, you know, high sophisticated currency and then uh, no, no one can access Koban because it's limited one, right? <laughs> it's a bit, you know, more uh, precious one. So first we are going to define some function and circulation of Zeni, and then we will start some campaign around June 7th, which is uh, about to be decided in detail, but uh, give us more time, maybe within a week or something, we can say uh, something more detailed. And then June 7th, uh, maybe many of, many of you can participate in our campaign of the Zeni so that you can uh, have an opportunity to get this Zeni. And then this is a second topic from my side. And the last one is, uh, we also prepare for some uh, kind of NFT items, which is like sword or you know, shields or something, some weapons for you to uh, be more easy to get, for example, like Avery Spirits or something like that. And then this campaign is also um, maybe announced by, I'm not sure, maybe July or August, maybe we can say more details for all of the participants to get this opportunity to have those items with NFTs. This is also super exciting. Maybe Dominic will explain more. 
Uh, so anyway, every day is like a, a festival. And then, you know, always progress a lot every week these days. So I'm really uh, excited to participate in our, jo- uh, in our project. And I'm really, hap- I'm really blessed to have the splendid team like us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ken. Wonderful news. And also, it's very intriguing, all these famous guys you mentioned. <laughs> yes, give it, give it that, give it that. <laughs> okay. Also, Mitsushi, I would like to give you word next. Okay. Here. okay. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay. In, uh, in rainy day, my internet Wi-Fi connectivity is weak and a bit unstable, so I need to turn off my screen. Sorry for that. So there are, uh, there are several updates. Uh, first of all, we finalized the logo for Edverse and uh, Edo Koban and Edo Zeni. And uh, Tokugawa-san gave us the uh, idea of Wave. And there's a famous artwork, uh, Fugaku Sanjirokke, uh, depicted by Tatsushika Hokusai, and especially uh, Kanagawa Oki Namira. You can, the, the big man Fuji is depicted behind the Wave. That's a very famous artwork. It's especially, and we got inspiration from that specific artwork and waves might sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, inside the, the elements of Japan, a lot of people, for uh, a lot of people, even outside Japan can recognize, uh, you know, that waves and uh, associate that wa- wave elements with uh, Japan. So I think that was a very effective idea uh, to, you know, fit this project. Another update is about uh, events. So uh, last week, we uh, had a booth at the asset management event held in Japan. And there, there are a lot of people who paid attention to our projects. And the important thing was a lot of people didn't have a literacy about like purchasing cryptocurrency or crypto assets. So we gave very detailed instruction about how to download MetaMask, how to uh, withdraw uh, Ethereum and transfer to MetaMask and purchase NFT. And I don't think there was any single booth uh, giving uh, detailed instructions about downloading MetaMask. We had uh, staff explaining, uh, you know, uh, MetaMask, and we, we sort of uh, literally, you know, downloaded MetaMask, MetaMask together with the customers and audience. I think that was a very benevolent event. A lot of cryptocurrency events, a lot of uh, token projects are not that benevolent. <laughs> you know, it, there's a very a high hurdle all the time, but uh, any of us needs to appeal to a wider range of audience. We need to appeal even non-crypto users. Uh, so we think uh, this project is a great gateway for a lot of people uh, to uh, interact with NFT and cryptocurrency and token world and metaverse. So I think we will continue to give that sort of benevolent instructions about installing MetaMask together and uh, give a clear and detailed guideline about our purchasing process. And I. Uh, as an extension of that uh, strategy, we will have an uh, online event today. Uh, we call it a monthly adverse uh, uh, rainy season camp. So we will uh, encompass the idea of uh, uh, adverse and we will give uh, detailed instructions about Edokovan and Zeni and how to purchase those. So I think, uh, I hope a lot of people will uh, watch our monthly adverse insider and learn how to purchase uh, our tokens and NFT. I think that's the important update from me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mitsushi. I totally agree with you. A lot of people don't know how to start. And uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's very cool that we are uh, like helping from the zero. Uh, well, thank you very much. Also, the next, Dominique, could you please join us? Okay. Uh, yeah, as mentioned that we are really focusing on uh, just increasing the participants in the future for the Edo boss. Uh, wide range of generations from the, from the younger people to the elder people she can just enjoy and enjoy this game. So of course, uh, we just found that of course, young, uh, young generations really like battle game, but in the elder generation, it's really, really hard to just in the battle and just probably some you know, they push the buttons and then just you know, keep doing something very easily. So uh, we are now designing a uh, sort of wide range of uh, sort of, uh, different type of the games just that everyone can enjoy. This is uh, very, very important for us just uh, to to expand uh, expand this expand this eco- ecosystem in the world in the future. 
Um, I'm really looking forward to the end of 2023, the next year. Uh, that game is coming really, uh, the really uh, serious three that are coming up. And then um, uh, before before it's it's coming, um, we, we're really preparing for a lot of things to have uh, the many events like like uh, uh, today's uh, rainy rainy day uh, rainy season camps and also the last week uh, fourth of fourth of june's asset design fairs participations um that was uh, uh, the uh, uh, asset designs uh, uh, fairs participants is basically that the rich people uh, more than 100 people Hundred hundred rich people just coming in affairs, and then they try to find that the uh, the new products, new investments, items uh, for the future, um, and then they found that the metaverse uh, just just like us. Um, of course, that's, we are just only only a participants and just in uh, metaverse criteria, but they are very very interested. And also, the, yeah, as Mr. mentioned that, they tried to just create MetaMask, uh, the wallet first, but it took a lo little long time. They had to just remember, uh, they had to keep the secret code and, and the secret keys. Um, and then um, and then they're gonna, they're gonna just find us. And, and then those participants, the last, last time, 4th of June, and also today's event participants, uh, we discount 2% uh, 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 two percent of the price of uh, land NFTs uh, once that uh, the sales started from the June seventh uh, of July, and then um, this seventh uh, of July uh, today we announced the how to buy and the what kind of products that uh, is coming up on the seventh of July, and we are selling uh, land NFTs in uh, Daimyo Koji uh, areas. It's very important areas in uh, Tokyo, uh, around the Tokyo station, the east part of uh, Paris uh, uh, now. Um, uh, uh, the, but we have uh, two different type, uh, different styles of uh, part of the sales. Uh, uh, we just propose to, uh, to, to, to the people there who want to buy the land NFTs. One is that uh, the people really want to the, the, really familiar with uh, the cryptocurrencies, so they can pay by a USDC. And the USDC just uh, 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 we just put the price the, uh, the one NFT land NFT five meter times ten uh, meters uh, land uh, equivalent uh, areas. If we just uh, think about the real terms. Uh, it's like a 15 subos land NFTs. Uh, we set a 500 USDC, means that $500. And of course, uh, this uh, $500 is only the land fees. They have to, uh, when, when, when the buyer deploy, so they have to pay the, uh, the deployment uh, fees by themselves. And, and the, the other uh, method of a purchase is a Japanese yen, because now it's a, uh, uh, we can just buy NFT uh, by the Japanese yen, the fiat currency. So we just set the price to the 82,500 uh, Japanese yen. This is including everything, just deploy fees and also the consumption tax of 10% in Japan. Um, so uh, in the in the asset design fairs, it's a, it's a, at the little middle, it's a over middle aged people really don't know about cryptocurrency much. They really keen on uh, using the Japanese yen investments, not a sort of cryptocurrencies. So so they had to just uh, create MetaMask first, and then they have to find how to buy the uh, how do they buy by the Japanese yen. So. Uh, uh, today uh, we're going to teach. We're going to we're going to uh, inform everything uh, how we can um, uh, we can just invest, and then uh, people can just enjoy uh, investing uh, by Japanese yen and also the USDC, the cryptocurrencies. So I hope that the many people coming on uh, today's project, and then I hope that people can just enjoy uh, just towards the seventh of July. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very excited about today's uh, event as well. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for listening. And see, uh, hear you. See you next weekend. Goodbye.